Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today I wanted to do a video talking about the next part of the Crystal Tower that's going to be coming in Patch 2.3. Now, we don't have a lot of details about this yet, but I wanted to make a dedicated video for the Crystal Tower just because, well, I'm a lore junkie and I like to speculate about a few things. But let's talk about what we know so far about the Crystal Tower while we go through some of these screenshots from the live letter that we got on Thursday, June 12th with Yoshi P. Now, uh, here's what we know so far. We know that they're planning on the item level to be 100 from the gear, something that I had predicted quite a while ago. We don't know what the required item level would be, but if it is going to be an item level 100 uh, drop for all the gear, I'd imagine the minimum item level would be somewhere around 75, as to increase the required item level by 20, as well as the item reward item level by 20. Uh, on top of that, we do know there is going to be a lot of bosses here. There's going to be a lot of lore involved. We also know that among the drops, there's also going to be tombstones, uh, unidentified Allegan tombstones, the ones that drop in turn 7. There's going to be Sands of Time and Oils of Time, though they may not be available right when the Crystal Tower comes out. Between patch 2.3 and 2.4, we can expect maybe the tombstone to come first then the oils of time then the sands of time just based on the way that the loot is spread out in the second coil of bahamut now on top of that one thing a lot of people are wondering are the bosses that are going to be coming in the crystal tower and i actually just finished final fantasy 3 for the first time must have been just a month ago probably less and honestly it was a great game very grind heavy but i did get an idea of where all these bosses on this poster kind of belong in the story and how i can imagine them now uh going back to crystal tower one the labyrinth of the ancients that i didn't know that actually did exist in final fantasy 3 labyrinth of the ancients is the first area and acheron is actually titan in final fantasy 3 but because of the use of the name in final fantasy 14 for the primal they obviously couldn't call him Titan, so they just took one of his palette swaps and named him Acheron. So, he actually is the boss of the Labyrinth of the Ancients, so that was fairly accurate. On top of some of the other enemies, there's a random encounter, Bone Dragon in there, Thanatos is a random encounter in there, and uh, the King Behemoth, they are all random encounters inside the Labyrinth of the Ancients from Final Fantasy III. So I have an appreciation for how well the original Labyrinth of the Ancients was represented in Final Fantasy XIV. But it makes me wonder, how well is it going to be represented when we move on to the second part of the tower? For those of you who don't know, the second part of the tower is called the Circus Tower, Cycrus Tower. Somebody I'm sure knows way better than I do how that's actually pronounced, but I'll just call it the Crystal Tower just to be safe. Now, I know that when you first enter the Crystal Tower, you have the area known as Eureka on the first floor. And we did actually get a preview of some of the bosses. Now, of course, we have this poster to go by, and I can tell you right now... The there's three bosses on this poster that are actually from the land of Eureka, which is an optional area in Final Fantasy III. And that's in the bottom left, Scylla. On the left-hand side, that's actually Amon, although that is just a palette swap of one of the uh, palette swap of one of the main story bosses, Hein. And then on the right-hand side, above Acheron, you have the General, which are all Eureka bosses. And I'm actually expecting the General to also appear in the Crystal Tower in the second form. Now, I'm wondering, based on the preview you got, if we are actually going to Eureka in this time, because according to 4Gamer, we actually have some renders of the bosses that we can expect in the second Crystal Tower. There are three renders, and General's not there, but one that is there was kind of surprising to me. We have Scylla, which of course is this right here. We have Amon, which is of course this guy right here. And then most surprisingly, we got to see a render of Zande on the 4Gamer website. Now, the last time 4Gamer posted something was before we actually knew the names or the renders of the bosses for the second coil of Bahamut. So this actually ended up being fairly accurate. And uh, to be honest, with when I'm expecting them to do an expansion, which is around uh, March of next year, just my prediction, it would actually be a good idea to get Zande and the Land of Eureka out of the way in this patch, especially because it's supposed to be so story related. Uh, there's going to be a lot more story in this Crystal Tower than the last one, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing how these bosses are going to show. Now, if, assuming that the General is there, uh, I'm assuming the bosses that we're going to have, we're going to have five bosses is my guess. We're going to have Scylla, General, Amon, Zande, and I'm guessing one other boss that just comes from the game, probably a random enemy encounter from the game itself. On top of that, I'm expecting to run into green dragons, red dragons, I mean, there's you can see there's a bunch of different dragons right here in this picture. And there is a, a lot of dragons in the Crystal Tower that are considered extremely powerful, more powerful sometimes than the bosses in the Crystal Tower themselves. And they are among the hardest enemies you can encounter, extremely, extremely rare to encounter them. But I'm expecting we'll see a lot of those. On top of that, I'm expecting that by the end of the Crystal Tower, we'll get to see some sort of peak of the Cloud of Darkness, which is the final boss of Final Fantasy III. 
Um, but if the general isn't in there, I'm actually very much looking forward to seeing how the story is going to unravel with this. Because after we defeat Zande, it's almost definitely that we're going to awaken the hidden power that is the Cloud of Darkness. The Cloud of Darkness being Zande's approach at stopping time in the world, but being manipulated by her in the process. That would also mean that for the next, for the what I'm assuming to be the final part of the Crystal Tower, if not the final, very close to the last part of the Crystal Tower, we are going to be going to the World of Darkness, where we are going to encounter quite a few different features. Now, back to this poster, as you can see, we do have some bosses on the right-hand side that aren't used. Among them are Cerberus, Ahriman, General, who we haven't seen a render of yet, and of course, we have the Cloud of Darkness at the top. Now, Ahriman and Cerberus are almost definitely not going to be involved in this part of the Crystal Tower. They actually guard the uh, crystals of darkness in the world of darkness uh, in Final Fantasy 3. Among them is also Echidna and a two-headed dragon, which it wouldn't surprise me to see them used in the Crystal Tower in some way or another, especially in the next part of the Crystal Tower, since I'm assuming we'll have to do something with the four crystals of darkness before we can reach the Cloud of Darkness. But overall, I'm just looking towards the speculation uh, of the lore. Where's it going to go? For those of you who don't know, we actually had some, a very cliffhangery ending to the first part of the Crystal Tower. If you haven't paid attention to the story of the Crystal Tower, I... Uh, I won't spoil it right now, but you should definitely go back and watch just the few cutscenes that lead up to it. It was it was a lot of cliffhangers, not a lot of solid answers that we got. But I'm just wondering how this is all going to conclude. I mean, we're going to have Sila, Amon, and Zande this patch. I'm wondering what bosses we're going to have this patch and how they're really going to implement the Cloud of Darkness. Is, is, is she an immediate threat to the realm? Or is there something even more, something more unique to Final Fantasy XIV that we're going to be seeing in there? Because they have said that... They do want to have some unique Final Fantasy XIV enemies and bosses inside of the Crystal Tower. So I'm wondering which one of those we were we are going to get. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you think that the Cloud of Darkness is the ultimate any enemy, excuse me, or if you think there's actually uh, something a little bit more going on, something that really ties the Crystal Tower to the realm of Final Fantasy XIV to the fact that it is a piece of Allegan technology and not just who the people inside are, but what they were actually building and working to achieve. What was Zon trying to achieve uh, in his prison is he the power that uh, that we're thinking about that's at the top is it the cloud of darkness or could it be Omega weapon could it be Alexander could they have built something and stored it in this tower since the crystal tower was actually used to absorb uh, sun radiation and turn it into energy well I guess only time will tell hopefully you didn't mind this little speculation video I just like putting these out uh, now and again be sure to like favorite subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video let me know what you think about the crystal tower too where you think we're going story wise and if you're excited for the second part of the crystal tower coming on July 8th 2014 but anyway guys thank you for watching and until next time take care